Hello everyone, this is the Unit 4 Review by Topic and we're going to review transformations and geometry. And topic 1 is single transformations. Number 1, the question is rectangle ABC D will be dilated by a scale factor of 0 0.5. Remember, any time that you dilate to anything that is less than 1, it's going to get smaller. So if you have a figure like a rectangle on this coordinate grid right here, that rectangle is going to be smaller when you dilate it to a scale factor of 0.5. And remember, dilating something to a half, point, which is 0.5, is just halving the coordinates so if you have a as negative six so we're going to put a as negative six negative one if you dilate that to a factor of a half you're going to get an a prime of negative three and zero point negative zero point five And if you multiply negative 6 times 0.5, you would get negative 3. Negative 1 times 0.5, you get negative 0.5. Now, the only other, uh, the only one that has those coordinates is B. But we'll just take, check out B uh, right here just to make sure. We have B. The original B is negative 2, comma, negative 1. And B prime when it's dilated to a factor of 0 0.5 is negative 1, 0, negative 0 0.5. Remember, halving each number, negative 1, negative 0 0.5. So you don't have to do the rest. B is your answer. Point A has coordinates 6, 2. Which coordinates represent A prime under the dilation of a scale factor of 2? So all you have to do is multiply by 2. So my original A is 6, 2. If you multiply each X and Y by 2, you would get 12, 4. So D is your answer. Number 3, um, triangle PQR is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise in a counterclockwise direction about the origin. The origin about the origin means that it's just this is where it's spinning and that middle stays the same. What are the coordinates of P, P prime, Q prime, and R prime? Just remember a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. I just write, I just draw a, um, a clock on the top of my paper and I put 12, 3, 6, and 9. So whenever I get confused on which way to turn, um, I just look at this clock. Going this way is clockwise and going this way is counterclockwise. And I'll put CCW for that. Counterclockwise direction, I'm going this way to the left. So I am going to turn my page to the left this way so i'm going to give myself directions on what i have to basically um when i rotate it i'm giving myself directions as if this is zero zero and this is left and this is right and up and down so if i'm going to to the left and i'm not going up and down that q prime would be here and I'm going to turn this back and put Q prime right here and that's my Q prime now just going on that alone that is negative two zero so I have negative two zero here and I have negative two zero here I could cross out my C and I could cross out my A when I turn again I'm going to turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise, and I'm going to go for the uh, point P. So I'm going four to the left and one down. So I'm going to turn this back and go four to the left and one down. Four to the left and one down is right here, 
and that is my p prime. That coordinate right there is negative 4, negative 1. So negative 4, negative 1, negative 4, negative, oh, positive 1. This is out. That has to be my answer. And just so I am just completely positively sure about it, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I could get the other point. I'm going to turn it one more time. And so for my R, I'm going to go 3 to the left and then all the way down 5. So 3 to the left and 5, I'm going to turn it back, and I'm going to go 3 to the left and 5 down. And that's my R prime. When I go and connect these points, you can realize, okay, I did rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise it went this way all right let me just get out of that right there it went this way 90 degrees counterclockwise so my r is negative 3 negative 5 negative 3 negative 5 so d is definitely my answer that is a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise all right so the square below is to be rotated 90 degrees clockwise. So if I'm rotating clockwise 90 degrees, I am going in this direction. All right, 90 degrees clockwise. I'm going to turn it to the right, and I know that this is going to go over here. This square will be over here in that first quadrant. And if I rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, there it is. It's in the first quadrant. I know that all X and Y coordinates in the first quadrant are going to be positive. That is my answer. And that is basically it. Look at the stair shape graph below. If the figure is rotated 180 degrees counterclockwise, what will change about the stair shape? All right, so I'm... I'm just going to rotate, like when you rotate 180 degrees, it goes upside down, right? So you're rotating your paper upside down. So the area doesn't change when you rotate. So like no size changes at all. The direction the stair steps are facing, yes, that will change. So I'm going to put a little mark there. The length of the sides, no, that, that does not change. And the measure of the angles never change. So B is your answer. You don't really have to do this, but if you did rotate this 180 degrees, the direction of the stairs would change. Now, I'll prove it to you counterclockwise. By the way, it does not matter which way you turn um, 180 degrees because it's all upside down, and that is the way the stair, the direction of the stairs would change, the way they're facing. That's 180 degrees, no matter if you turn counterclockwise or clockwise. And that is the end of topic number one. Topic number two, identifying the sequence of the transformation. So this is like when it's done, and you're just going to identify what happened to, for it to get there. So this is topic number two, which sequence of transformations could take A, R, J to A prime, R prime, J prime. So that means the black triangle up top here above the x-axis is going to become the blue triangle below the x-axis so we're just going to go ahead and i could just see that this was reflected it's not reflected over the y because reflection over the y would take it over here right and it, it's not reflecting over the y so that's that's incomplete that's not wrong um, the translation one unit right and 180 degree rotation, 180 degree rotation always brings it, it always skips a quadrant. It, so if it starts in, this is quadrant number one, it'll go to quadrant number three. It'll be somewhere over here. So I'm going to say that that 180 degree rotation is wrong. Reflection over the x-axis seems to be what's happening. So I'm going to do, I'm going to actually do that. So this is 1, 2. This is 1, 2. So this would be my R. The J would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And J would be 1, 2, 3, 
four, five. Sorry, that's one down. So that would be my J. And I'm going to put that as J. And then I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to put that as my A. So that's the reflection over X. And if you connect those points, you can see exactly what we have. We have the triangle. It's reflected over the X. That is for sure. But now it has to get to where the prime is. So this R goes over to the right one. This A goes over to the right one. This J goes over to the right one one to become j prime so one unit right d all right just remember if you take if you took this from the uh the prime image and went to the original then it would look like you were reflecting over the x and then moving it translating it one unit to the left and so you, it's very important to know which is the original figure versus the prime image. And that is that. All right, number two, sequence of transformations. Which sequence of transformations will perform below? First off, this is the original. I'm going to put an O for original because that starts with the letter O. And I for image because I is image. All right, so we have the primes, and that's how I know that figure A prime is the image. And there are no primes on the original. I noticed that it did get smaller. So that means a dilation of, I don't even know. I'm just going to kind of guess of what happens here. So this is one, two, three, four. So this side is four. And if I go ahead and look at the same two letters on the other side, that's two. So I'm thinking that it's a half. All right. So there has to be dilation of a half scale factor of a half in what sequence I'm picking. So let's go ahead and see. Figure A was translated eight units to the left and four units up and then dilated to its original scale factor of two. That is out. It did not dilate to a scale factor of two. It dilated to a scale factor of a half from the original to the image. So figure A was translated four units to the left, blah, 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 blah. Scale factor of a half. Okay, we're going to put that there. And then this scale factor of a half. Okay, we're going to put that there dilated to a original scale uh, factor of a half, then reflected over line y equals x. Okay, let's go ahead and dilate it to a factor of a half. Um, okay, so we have 2, 2, and I'm going to do this as a is 2, 2. A prime, remember, dilated to a factor of a half, Half of 2 and half of 2 would be 1, 1. B is 2, 6. Half of 2 is 1. Half of 6 is 3. C, 6, 6. C prime. Three, three. And then D, the original is six, two. And D prime is three, one. All right, let's go ahead and graph those. A prime is one, one. So this is where my A prime would be. Uh, one, three is the B. E prime. C is 3, 3. Right here. And D is 3, 1. So we're going to connect that little, uh, trying the uh, little square. And we're going to notice that it's now the same size as what is on the left side. So now, 
B says translated, all right, scale factor of a half and translated four units to the left. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to take A and see if it matches up with A prime if I go four to the left. One, two, three, four, four to the left, and two units up. One, two. That works. That's it. Um, this one says to, to reflect it over y equals x. No, it's not going to work. Uh, and so you know already that this is a translation that is 4 to the left and then 2 up. And if you looked at every point, it would be 4 to the left, 2 up. 4 to the left, 2 up. B is your answer. Let's move on. Figure A can be transformed to create figure B using a sequence of transformations. Which transformation can be used, which sequence can be used to accomplish this? Dilation and rotation. Rotation and translation. Uh, translation and reflection. Reflection and dilation. First off, I am going to cancel out the obvious it's not getting any larger, right? Or it's, and it's not getting any smaller. So from A to B, the, you know that dilation is not a part of this. So now you have just that to look at. So a reflection and a translation, all right, that could be a rotation and a translation. That could be as, as well. Um, but we're going to figure out, I never really do rotations first. Um, I always will, will reflect. And if I could see right now, if reflecting over the Y, it's not going to get, uh, it's not going to get the desired result because it has to be pointing down, right? So that, that reflection is not really going to work for me. Um, and even if I reflect it over the X, it's not going to really point in the direction. It's going to point down if I reflect over the X, but it's not going to be where this side is closest to the right. But if I do rotate it, now watch A. If I rotate it 180 degrees, which would skip a quadrant really, and go over there you could see it's pointing down and also this long side is to the right of where I need it um, it's to the right so and then after that I would just have to translate it if you're taking a look at the original the original is translated up the, that to one this is three one that's four one then looking right here you would have to translate it actually up two. So this is definitely a rotation and a translation because that's it, that's exactly what I would do. I would turn my paper, see if the rotation works out. I never try to, I, I try not to do rotations at all, um, but sometimes you have to, all right? So when you rotate it, it actually is pointing this way, this, this part, this is the long side that I'm, I'm kind of focusing on. Um, when I rotate it 180 degrees, that long side matches up with that one, but it's down further. And then you translate it to up and you'll get exactly what B looks like. And that's it. Okay. So um, we have a, a rectangle. Like you have to read uh, about what's going on here. So rectangle A in quadrant is in quadrant three. So they're not, do you notice there's no, uh, there's nothing on here. So we're just going to say, okay, rectangle A, this is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. This is quadrant three. So this is the original and this is rectangle A. Rectangle B is in quadrant one. So this is B. And that's how you, you know, absolutely know that, uh, that that's there. Okay, and which one is what? Okay, let's see if we could figure this out. Reflect a, a tri rectangle A over the x-axis. So that would bring it here, 
right, reflect and rotate 90 degrees clockwise, then it would bring it there and translate it three down and one to the left. That actually looks like it could work. Um, so let me see if, um, if that works. And the only way to do it is to actually put that down on the page. So we're going to rotate 90 degrees clockwise, all right? Uh, reflect. We're going to reflect rectangle A over the X axis. So let's do that first. We're going to just take it and we're going to reflect it. It's at two. So that means this right here is at two and it's at, it looks like it's in between four and two right there. So we're good with that. And then we're going to go up to here, right here. We're good with that. And then we're going to go with four. We're going to go to four up here, right in the middle there. And then right here. Okay. And we're going to, that's a reflection over. We'll move that up. And that's a reflection over the X. So this is the part that we did already. Now it says to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise just like this. All right. So now I'm going two to the right, two to the right, and three up. Four to the right, and three up. So I'm going to start plotting this two to the right and three up. And that's this one. Four to the right and three up. And then it's um, two to the right and six up and, two, and four to the right and six up. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that. And hopefully this is my answer. Let's see if. If that is, move this up a bit. Okay. So now I rotated it 90 degrees clockwise and I, I have to translate it three down. Let's see if this works. Translate it three down and one to the left. So three down would take this one and then three and then one to the left. So that would be one, two, three, because it's going by twos, and then one to the left right there, and that, and that works. So that's why A is my answer, all right? And so um, it, it, it's just like trial and error, and you have to, you, there is no shortcut for this. Um, you have, like, I would never have seen that like those sequences that like kind of matched up, it looked like it did re reflect over the X. So a reflection over the Y could be, um, and then it would have to rotate because a reflection over Y would just take it over here in the same like horizontal manner. And then it would have to rotate to get to something like this standing upright. Um, so, I kind of knew that it wasn't a reflection of uh, over the Y axis. And that's why I canceled that out. The, um, the rotation of 180 degrees, um, with, like if you're taking this and rotating it 180 degrees, it'll still be a horizontal triangle uh, rectangle over there. And then reflection over the X would probably bring it down here somewhere and then reflection over the Y would bring it all the way back. So that's out. Translate six, um, translate rectangle A, six units right, right? Six units right would bring it over here and then two units up and then rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise it would be going this way. It almost looks like it could work, um, but it doesn't. A is your answer, right? A lot of trial and error. Uh, and that's it. 
So number five, which sequence of transformations could map ABC, this is the original right here, to DEF, the image would be down here. So we have a counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees, counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees. So a counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees would bring it here. And it would look exactly the same as this but turned upside down and then it would have to reflect over the x-axis is my guess all right so let's see if it's correct though um counterclockwise 90 degrees followed by translation two units down no because if it if it has a counterclockwise rotation that means it's going it's going this way counterclockwise let me put that clock on here somewhere. So counterclockwise would be this way, turning it that way. So I just did the 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation, right? So counterclockwise rotation would bring it right up here. And now counterclockwise rotation and followed by a reflection across the y-axis looks exactly what it would be um this would be f right here and you're talking about reflecting so that would be four and four that would be perfect this would be d and a this would be e everything matches up that is my answer so doing the first um sequence the first part of the sequence is definitely ideal a is your answer and that is it so here is topic three and topic three is properties of transformed figures dan drew square a b c d on a coordinate grid he transformed the square in four different ways as shown in the table reflected across the y-axis translated two units downward Rotation of 90 degrees uh, about the origin in a counterclockwise direction and a dilation of a scale factor of a half. As soon as that dilation comes on, right, and it, it actually is part of the sequence, you know that you have changed the size of the figure. It's the only one that changes the size. Changes size. So, which transformation will produce an image congruent to A, B, C, D? Right? Only transformation one. Only transformation four. This will be congruent. Remember, when you reflect, you do not change the size. So, it's definitely congruent. And every figure that is congruent is also similar. Translation of two units down, downward is also congruent. A rotation is definitely congruent. You're not changing the size. The only one that changes the size and that is similar is four. So translations one, two, and three will be congruent. D is your answer. Number two, triangle XYZ is translated 10 feet down and reflected across the x-axis, over the x-axis. Which statement is true? Just remember, true. Sometimes they look for false. About the image created in the prime triangle. The perimeter of the original triangle and, and the prime triangle are the same. That seems true. The angle measures have changed. No, they haven't. No, at no time, even dilation um, does not change the angle measures. So please don't put that the angle measures ever change unless you have different figures. That is not true. The angle measures never change. The image and the original figure are similar, but not congruent. That's not true. That is false. Because in order to be similar, dilation had to be a part of this, and it's only been translated and reflected. Side lengths of the original figure have increased to double the size. No, they haven't. 
Remember, that only happens with a dilation. So which one is true? The perimeter of the original triangle and the prime triangle are the same. A is your answer. Number three, a series of transformations on a quadrilateral S resulted in quadrilateral T. S, T. The angle measures of quadrilateral T are congruent to those of quadrilateral S. Yes, we've already mentioned that... Um, that the that the angle measures never change so they're definitely congruent they're the same the side lengths are congruent to quadrilateral the quadrilateral t and quadrilateral s so that means the side lengths did not change either so which transformation on the quadrilateral can be included in the results all right so translation yes it could be um rotation yes it could be reflection yes it could be no it can't Remember, dilation changes the side lengths. So E, translation, rotation, and or reflection. Yes, all of them that I put a check mark next to because the side lengths remain the same. The angles remain the same no matter what. No matter what. Please don't put that the angles ever change. Rectangle R undergoes a dilation. There it is right there with a scale factor of 9. Um, and then 180 degree clockwise rotation about the origin, resulting in rectangle S. Which statement about rectangles R and S is true? They are congruent and similar. If it has a dilation, that is definitely not congruent. So please don't say congruent. No matter what, if there's dilation, um, there's only one dilation that makes a congruent figure we'll get to that b they are similar but not congruent i like that answer b is your answer congruent but not similar it's not congruent because of the dilation they are neither congruent nor similar the only time you're putting neither please don't pick neither the only time you're putting neither is when you have different figures square and a rectangle they are neither congruent nor similar so the dilation of a scale factor of 9 changes the size much larger, so it's just similar. The only dilation with a um, that it makes a congruent and similar figure is a dilation of 1, which means dilation is the same exact thing. Uh, this, the figure starts and it just remains the same size in a dilation of 1. But it, otherwise, it is dilation of 9. You know it's getting much larger. It is definitely similar, but not congruent. Rectangle uh, FGHJ um, is shown below. There it is, shown below. Um, is translated six units right and one unit up. This is, it's, it, so six units right and one unit up. State. Okay, it was just driving me crazy because I couldn't see the whole thing. So, six units right, one unit up. Give myself a little bit of shorthand. Um, FG is three, right? And GH is one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> so, when this moves six to the right and one up, um, it does FG, F prime, G prime stay three? Does G prime, H prime stay five? Yes. All right. You're just moving something. It's not going to grow as you move it. So A is your answer. But I'm just going to go through the other ones to see uh, why they are not the answers. Um, F prime and G prime is three. That looks good. That's true. But G prime, H prime did not magically grow to six, all right? So as you moved it six to the right and one up, um, that's not happening. F, F prime, G prime, there's no way that it gets to nine, all right? So that's out. And again, F prime, G prime, there's no way it could get to nine. A is your answer. Um, and if you got that, then I guess congratulations. Like, you know, I mean, it's great that you got that. All right, so topic four. Um, a little bit of a tricky question here. All right. So I'm going to highlight some triangle, um, rectangles, quadrilaterals. All right. So we have A, B, C, D. 
um, it's just reflected over the X and rotated 180. So this ABCD and quadrilateral WXYZ, they're the same size and shape. Um, so they are congruent quadrilaterals, right? So because nothing happened with dilation at all. So I'm going to change the color BART dilated ABCD to a scale factor of two and then translated it five units down. Then he labeled HIJK. So it says identify a pair of quadrilaterals from the two, from the three, um, ABCD, WXYZ, and HIJK that are congruent. Now we said right here, this ABCD has to be congruent to WXYZ. And the way you would write that, um, if you really want to impress people, is with an equal sign and a squiggly on the top, just like that. That is the congruent symbol. It's not called squiggly, but, you know, what I'm saying, that wave on the top of the equal sign means that they are congruent. ABC, quadrilateral ABC is just reflected and then rotated. So obviously they are congruent. Identify a pair of quadrilaterals, the three, that are similar but not congruent. So we could say ABCD. is not congruent to H, I, J, K. The reason why is because the scale factor A, B, C, D is now dilated to a scale factor of 2 and then translated down to H, I, J, K. So H, I, J, K and A, B, C, D, they're not the same size because of the dilation so there you go all right describe a transformation on Lisa's quadrilateral w x y z that would make the resulting w prime x prime y prime and z prime congruent to bart's quadrilateral h i j k so Lisa's right here you just take a look at w because this is confusing right so this WXYZ is leases, right? So describe a transformation that could happen to that quadrilateral to make it congruent to Bart's quadrilateral right here. So ABCD starts out as a quadrilateral. It gets dilated by Bart to a scale factor of 2, and it becomes HIJK. Lisa did not dilate it. So it starts at the same size as A, B, C, D. So this here, this W, X, Y, Z, is the same size as A, B, C, D, right? So, but it has to be dilated to a scale factor of 2 to get to be congruent, the same size and shape as H, I, J, K. So it would have to be, um, we're just going to put down W, X, Y, Z. Would have to be dilated to a scale factor. of two to be congruent to H I J K and that's it Okay, trapezoid R, S, T, U, and trapezoid N, M, L, K, shown on the coordinate plane, are congruent. Which sequence of transformations would take 
RSTU onto M NMLK. So I'm going to say that this definitely will reflect. So I'm going to say reflect. over the x-axis. Okay, so reflect over the x-axis. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. So one, two, one, two, and there's your S. This T is two, this T is down here, that's T. This is four way, that means that one is four way right here, this is U. And then R is four way, and then R would be four way right here. I think I know what happens next because uh, because I'm doing that that reflection. So I know that was a reflection. Now I know I have to move it and translate it one unit to the left. This has to go one unit to the left to get to there. And every point would have to move one unit to the left. So the next thing is translate one unit left. And that's it. All right. So um, a circle is shown below is centered at zero, zero. So the center is right here at zero, zero. Passes through the point Q at zero, negative two. This is Q. Um, and then scale, okay. So, so it was dilated, um, sorry, it passes through point Q at zero, negative two. So you're going to have to make point Q. There's point P. Here's point Q. All right. So it was dilated by a scale factor of a half. So that's point Q. So Q is zero, negative two. And it's dilated to a scale factor of a half. So Q prime would be 0, negative 1. So I'm going to move it up to here. That's your Q prime. And then translated 1 left and 3 down. So I'm going to move this 1 left. And then I'm going to go 3 down. 1, 2, and three and that's right there so one left it's dilated to a scale factor of a half brings it up here and then one left and then three down one two three and then what is the uh the coordinate of this point right here negative one negative four Negative one, negative four. And that's a that's a tough one. All right. So that's about it. <clears throat> All right, sequence of transformations is applied to an equilateral triangle on a coordinate plane. The transformations were used were rotations, reflections, and dilations. Which statement about the resulting figure is true? The angles will be congruent. They will always be congruent. doesn't matter what happens. The side lengths will not be congruent. The reason why is because they are dilating. The figures will be similar, congruent, or both. If it dilates, and it's not dilating to a factor of one, all right, it's dilating to a factor of something else, it'll just be similar. The areas will not be congruent. Again, they're dilating. They're not going to be the same. And the perimeters will not be congruent. 
again, they're dilating. So the perimeters would change. The, the lengths of the sides would change. All right. Triangle show, uh, triangle ABC is shown on the coordinate grid. Rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise and then, um, label them as prime. So 90 degrees counterclockwise would turn it to the left just like this. Um, so you're looking at a triangle that's gonna like your rotation is gonna look exactly like this so I don't want to get anybody confused um, when I'm looking at this I'm just gonna give myself directions on which way to go so C would be one to the right and two up and B would be one to the right and eight up so I'm gonna just write that down instead of going back and forth uh, so C prime would be one to the right and two up. And you notice I'm not writing the coordinates down. B prime is one to the right from zero, zero, one to the right and eight up. And A would be four to the left and two up. Now I could turn my paper back just like this and just go ahead and plot all my points on there. Um, so C would be one to the right and two up. So this is going to be my new C prime. And then B would be one to the right and eight up. That's my B prime. And then uh, four to the right and two up. That would be my A prime. And so now we're just going to connect those. And this is what my triangle looks like. Just like I saw when I did rotate my paper, just like that. So that's out. That's good. Um, reflect the triangle A prime, B prime, C prime over the X axis. So this way. So one, two down. That means one, two down. That would be A double prime. C double prime would be two down, and this would be two down. This is C double prime. And B prime would be eight down, and then eight down. Connecting those, that's nice. Connecting those would be like that. And like that. So far, so good. And we have another part. What is what are the coordinates? What is the coordinate of B double prime? B double prime is 1, negative 8. Are the triangles A, B, C and A double prime, B prime, double prime and the double prime triangle, are they triangles congruent, similar, both or neither? They are congruent, same size, same shape. They're congruent and similar remember every congruent figure is also similar but similar figures are not congruent so if they are the same shape and size that means they're congruent and similar all right the last topic is of volume so the following cylinder has a, a volume of 128 pi so I'm going to put a key down and I'm just going to put 128 pi. The radius of the base of the cylinder is four centimeters. So I'm going to put R four centimeters. The height says find the height. So I'm going to put a nice question mark. And I'm going to put down V equals pi R squared H. My V, I have down my volume. They're giving me the volume as 128 pi. Equals pi. The R they gave me is 4. So I put 4 squared. And then the H, I'm just going to put in parentheses like that. All right. So I'm going to have to solve for H. Before I do that, uh, this 4 squared is just bothering me, so I'm just going to put 128 pi. It's bothering me. Um, 
And then this 4 squared is 16. Now it's not long. And then h. All right. So I am going to divide because this is all multiplication, right? So all attached by multiplication. I'm going to divide by whatever is next to the h. So my pi and 16. 16. I'm going to just change it around so the numbers are on top. You could do that because multiplication is commutative. Um, so you could switch them around. Uh, this pi cancels with that pi. 16 cancels with the 16. See these pi's? They cancel. H comes down and then you're just going to divide 128. And you could see um, that 128 divided by 16 is 8. And we solved for the height. So it's 8 and it's centimeters it is not centimeters cubed just remember you're solving for height which is just centimeters so your height is in centimeters eight and that is it right there <clears throat> okay so there are two boxes of cereal in the shape of rectangular prisms on a shelf so um, box A has a height of 25. So I'm going to put box A here. And I'm going to put box B. So we have 25, the height. So V equals length times width times height as far as uh, like a rectangular prism. So we have V equals the length, which is 20, the width, which is 9, and we are going to figure out that the height is 25. All right, so I'm going to take a calculator because I can't do that. I don't have enough fingers. Um, so we have 20. times 9 times 25 and you press enter you get 4500 v equals 4500 box b same thing it is a rectangular prism so rectangular prism length times width times height v equals 25 times 19 you're just multiplying all three numbers i'm not even looking all right this is the width this is the length this is the blah so let's go ahead and just multiply those and see what we get 25 times 19 times 6 2850 And what's the difference? You know, when you, you're talking about the difference, you're talking about subtraction. Uh, we know this is out. We know this is out, just in case you wanted to add it. Um, and so let's just make sure 4,500 minus 2,850 is... Ex is indeed a thousand six fifty and that is a all right and that is how you do that question ronald wants to buy a container the whole barbecue sauce for his mcnuggets it's very important it needs to be large enough to hold all of the sauce because he eats a lot of McNuggets. one container is a sphere with a diameter of six so I'm just going to put over here sphere. This is nicely set up. This is how you would have to set it up if there was nothing set up for you. So we're going to put a key down. And uh, one container is a sphere with a diameter of six. But I'm going to put a radius of half that, which is three. So V equals there. Remember, a sphere has no height um, that is needed. So we're going to just put this down in the calculator we're going to grab our calculator wrong one we're going to grab our calculator and we are going to 
make this larger and clear that out. Four over three. Press the calculate. Um, press the fraction symbol. Pi is over here, and you don't have to press times. So if it, it's four over three pi, the calculator knows that you are going to multiply it or you want to multiply it. And then three to the third power, you press this caret symbol, and then it'll you'll see this box appear, and you press to the third, and you press enter, and you will get 108 pi over three, and you press the double arrow to convert that, and it says that. So um, it is volume is 113.09 and it, I rounded it to the nearest tenth, but it says to round to the uh, nearest foot, cubic foot. So we're going to put V equals 113 cubic feet. So now the cylinder, we're going to put a key down for the cylinder and we're going to one's a sphere the other container is a cylinder the diameter is six feet so we're going to put diameter six and again the radius is three and then the height is three so we put v is uh in pi and r squared three squared and an H, which is 3. So we're just going to put that in the calculator. And we're going to clear that out. And we're going to press pi times 3 squared times 3. And that's 27 pi, but they don't want it in terms of pi. They want it rounded to the nearest well, I'm just going to put 4.82 and then uh, that is cubic feet and then I'm just going to round it to what they want the nearest cubic foot which is 85 And which container has the greater volume? The greater volume is the sphere. The sphere has the greater the greater volume. Right? The dimensions of a cone are shown in the figure below. The approximate was the approximate volume in cubic centimeters of the cone. So you're basically going to have to look, all right, to, at your um, for the form on the reference sheet. And just remember, um, the reference sheet is going to look like this on the state exam. Um, and you are going to go down and try to find cone there. There's the triangle, the parallelogram, the general prism, um, the cylinder, which is what you need. The Pythagorean theorem is what you need. Um, and the cone right here, V equals one-third pi r squared h. Then you go back to your question. V equals one-third pi r squared h. Don't forget the pi. Now that you have that, we're going to put a key down. We do not have the volume. We do have the height is 11. And we do have the radius, and they give you the radius is 6. This is a nice easy question. V equals 1 over 3 pi. The R squared is 6 squared. The H is 11. Grab your calculator. Clear it out. Um, we're going to press 1 third. Pi. Times 6. Squared. 
n times 11. And we're going to just go ahead and press that. So it is v equals 414.6, let's see, right, 0.7. So approximately, if this is rounded, it is 415. All right, so I'm rounding it to the nearest hole, cubic centimeter. All right, a pyramid is sliced. Um, we've seen this question before. This is the slicing question that we went over in class. The pyramid is sliced uh, in a, by a plane that passes vertically through the top vertex and is perpendicular to its base perpendicular to the base uh, would result what is the resulting two-dimensional shape in the area of the plane section so if you're just taking a look at this and it's slicing it downward this is resulting in a triangle so you're basically saying okay this is parallel to this part right here that's the triangle that we're talking about right there so along this section right here this is the base and that is four and then this is the height the height is 10 so we're going to go down right here this is 10 so the area so it has to be a triangle it's not a rectangle so you to figure out the area the area formula for a triangle is half base times height area equals half base the half the base is and uh the base is four and the height is 10. so we have area equals um if you just put this into your calculator this is 20. and a is your answer it's a slicing problem right and that ends the uh the review sheet um, hopefully that helped you out and thank you for watching. See you next time.